Hi, I'm Jen and I'm bringing you another Lightroom tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on selective coloring in Lightroom, which is where you have a black and white photo with aspects in color. Um, so before I start, I'd like to say that I don't personally use selective color. It's not part of my workflow, but I know a lot of people do, so that's why I'm going to make the tutorial. So. Don't feel the need to send me hate mail or leave crappy comments. If you like it, cool. If not, that's okay too. Also, my typical disclaimer, I don't think I'm the best photographer in the world. I'm not doing these tutorials to make you the best photographer. I'm just sharing tips that I know and that help me. So to get started, we're going to be using the brush tool in Lightroom today. So once you have your image edited the way you want it, Go over to the adjustment brush, and then from the drop down effect menu, you're going to select saturation. If you don't have the saturation option, that's fine. Just set all the other options to zero and the saturation at negative 100. This is going to give us the option just to paint on black and white. First, if you're comfortable with brushes, that's great. If not, your basic tools are right here. You can change the size here with the size slider or you can scroll up and down with your mouse or you can use the left and right bracket key on your keyboard. Feather adjusts the strength of the edge of the circle. So a small feather is going to give you a, a really hard circle. A large feather is going to give you a really soft circle like, like that. And then for flow, that's going to control your opacity or the transparency of the black and white that we're painting on. So if we keep it high, it's going to be full black and white full desaturation. If you leave it low, it's going to be barely any. You're not going to be able to see it nearly as much. and It'll leave some color bleeding through. So first we're going to start with turning the flow all the way up and the feather all the way down and bump up that brush size because we're just painting the whole thing with black and white. Okay, now I recommend actually exiting out of the brush and doing a little bit of re-editing on the image. Sometimes painting on desaturation leaves it a little bit flat, so go ahead and edit it to make it look the way you want it. You know, bump your contrast, change your saturate, change your shadows and your clarity, whatever you would normally do. Once it looks the way you want it, go back into your adjustment brushes and we're going to click on this little pin and that will highlight and reactivate the brush that we just used. Now to add in color we're actually going to go to erase and we're going to erase off the black and white that we just painted on. Again go ahead and change your size. For this I recommend leaving your feather um, not totally zero but not really high either. That way you don't have super hard or super soft edges. And then adjust your flow to whatever you want your image to look like. If you leave it around 50, the color is going to be muted. But if you put it up to 100, it's going to be vibrant. So depends on the look that you're going for. Undo both of those. All right, so I'm going to leave my flow all the way up. And I'm just going to paint this one crayon here. You might find it easier to zoom into your image by hitting the Z button on your computer. Um, but sometimes that's also just more of a pain in the butt. So I have this painted, but you can see that the edges aren't entirely clean. So to fix that, I'm just going to re-highlight brush A, which is the black and white brush that we started with. And it already has all those presets for us. And I'm going to adjust my size down and just paint that black and white right over my mistake. And on the reverse, if you screw up and do a black and white line over this, you just go right back to the erase section and erase that black and white off of there. So that's it. That's how you do selective coloring in Lightroom. It's not the easiest way, but it's definitely possible. So my name's Jen. I hope that helps. If you'd like to find me on social media, you can find me through my website, www.jenswedinephotography.com slash F for Facebook, T for Twitter, Y for YouTube, P for Pinterest, or B for my blog will get you my most current work. And make sure you subscribe to me here on YouTube.